Hey guys, it's Scott here from Horse Racing Daily, and tonight we're going to go over who can win the Fleur de Lis Stakes, which is on Saturday night at Churchill. It's for a spot in the Breeders' Cup Distaff, one of two winning your end Breeders' Cup races on the card that night. And there's really two horses that kind of stand over this field, and a third one that could potentially surprise, and I'll focus more on them because Skeptic, I don't think that she's going to do it. She hasn't really beaten much and not done it with any kind of conviction, so I'm not going to waste y'all's time on her. I've done look and try to make the video short, sweet, and to the point we'll uh, eliminate her. Uh, she's a jewel. is one of the two that really stands out. She was She's trained by Steve Asmussen. And it looks like she's going to take the step forward last year in the uh, Grade 1 Alabama. She had that convincing win in the Iowa Oaks. She finished second, which wasn't too bad in the Alabama, but it wasn't what I expected, at least coming out of that race for. But she went on to win the, win the Remington Park Oaks and uh, finished fourth in the Zyra Park Oaks and came back in February of this year and ran the Bacolia, got first by two and three quarters. And then she ran in the Latroyan Stakes on uh, Kentucky Oaks Day. And I'm going to have a different take on that pace scenario. She, I thought they caught one of the slower paces on the whole card that day, even though Bristnet says plus three and plus four. But I'll show you some of the other times for races on that card. Like here, they ran 24.01, 47.92, And we'll go to the race before with McKenzie. See 2381, 4771, 11607, 13504, and 14110. So, and of course, we'll go to the Kentucky Oaks race, which was females. And you see how much faster they ran 2325, 4665, 11126, 13670 for 15017. So, looking at that and then seeing the Pace for this race at 2401, 47.92, 112.05, 136.96. So I'm going to say that the first two fractions were definitely on the sore side of the card, which benefited all Emma. I thought Secret Spice done all the kind of dirty work in the race, which we'll show right here. Uh, she's a Julius, the one horse, and she's going to have a good break. Uh, Secret Spice. Uh, it's going to sit about three or four wide on the turn. Uh, Emma is going to take the lead and they're going to slow down right after once they start getting off the turn. Uh, I like the ride that uh, she's a Julie got this race. She just kind of sat the perfect trip and uh, took over and ran down Secret Spice to see 2401. And the jockey on the fours kind of holding her back a little bit. So I didn't, if you're a fan of that horse down the road, you might want to look at that. But she'll see here in a minute that Secret Spice is going to come up on terms with the four. And she's a jewelry, just going to sit back and be patient. I thought that was a good part on the ride there to not. Maybe try to go up and take the pace and just sit back and let the other horse do the dirty work. And now she's getting asked to go. And here it looks like Secret Spice is ready to just take over and win this race. But Caesar Julie is going to uh, keep coming and keep coming. And she's going to run Secret Spice down at the wire. Um, I thought it was a very good performance. So... Uh, that does definitely make her one of the favorites in this race. It should, I personally think it's going to be a 1 2 exacto with uh, a late. And I think the late, you don't really know what you're going to get this race. And by that, I mean in the Azuri Stakes, she caught a very slow pace in the first race back off the layoff. At a distance, I don't think a mile and sixteenth is her best distance. I think uh, a mile and an eighth, mile and a quarter. And you see she's raced twice at a mile and a quarter. And that's been probably her two best races her whole life. 
so she definitely needs the distance but she'll get that extra uh, half a furlong in this race to work excuse me work with and we'll watch the first race the Aziri Sticks and you had Shamrock Rose in this race uh, who won the Breeders Cup Sprint and you also had Midnight Bisu who's the number two horse and of course after watching her win on the Belmont undercard that was a very convincing performance I think enough to make her be the probably the best older female dirt horse right now but those two apps had absolutely no pace to run at in this race that was 24.51 uh, the half was in I think 48 something But you'll see it late, kind of on her own, start coming up to try to make a move to the front. And then Midnight Beast is sitting a perfect trip on the inside. Almost kind of how she won on the Belmont undercard, just kind of rode up the rail and took over from Come Dancing. And the late's having to come a little bit wider. I don't think that will make much of a difference out of these two in the race. Because it looked like Midnight Bisu definitely established that she was the better horse out of the two in the race. And she'll see that Alate's you know, being asked to go. and She's having to come out of some pretty good urging just to get on terms with the sixth horse. Who I think is Shamrock Rose. And Midnight Bisu is just coming up the rail. And of course Alate is... I'm going to pass Shamrock Rose and take second. But you can make a case that maybe her coming wide on uh, around the turns could have made a difference in that race. I'm not so, so sure about that. But you'll see that the time came back slower than some of the other races with the three-year-olds. This was the day they had the two divisions of the Rebel Stakes. But when you run 24-51, 48-81, 1 it's going to be tough to kind of catch them on the time because you'll see that the improbable long range toddy race 2377 47 58 111 97 or 142-49 and you'll see that the uh, SX stakes with the older male dirt horses 2327-4733-111-82 for 142-66 so they ran much faster to start off the race. And then, of course, the race with Omaha Beach, who was going to be the Kentucky Derby favorite before he got scratched. Ran 23-54-47-29-111-82 from 142-42. So you'll see that going back to it, 24-51-48-81-112-84. It's so almost a second slower at the 6 for all marker. So I thought they'd done really good trying to almost come up on uh, even times with them which I still can't figure out how come Equibase gave a late a 111 speed figure for this and gave Omaha Beach a, a 110 for his race but that's a topic for another day and we'll go to the Apple Blossom and this race I thought was kind of opposite this should have been a late race, the pace was set up more in her favor. You still had Midnight Bisu, but you also had Escape Claus, who has been in very good form this year up until the last race at Belmont. And we'll go to that race. You'll see 2307, 4708, 112, 12, 137, 12 for 14388. And we'll, uh, look at some of the other races this you didn't have too much to really compare to but this race 23 32 47 45 112 44 138 80 145 39 so we'll look at it and she's going to be the one horse and she's going to get a good break i can't really explain the bad effort maybe bill mott's been pointing to this race all along and that's why maybe she wasn't fully cranked for the race. I don't really know. 
I'm willing to give her a pass on that race just because Bill Mott has historically done pretty good on bringing horses to Churchill. So if she runs maybe back to her first race, which I don't think she's as bad as this race, but I also don't think even on her best day she's going to really stand out over the field. I think her best races were last year. But she's going to kind of ride the rail in this race. Except down the stretch she's not really going to do much firing. And of course Midnight Bisu is going to be on the outside. and They just about run the exact opposite trips whereas Midnight Bisu was on the inside last time. Now Midnight Bisu is going to be the one setting the wide trip but the results ain't going to be flip-flop this time. But you'll see Midnight Bisu take over from Escape Claws on the lace just She's going to rally to get in the third, but when it comes down the stretch, she's not going to have much to uh, catch him with. But like I said, you can maybe chalk that up to her not being fully current weight, maybe wait for this race because this race does have Breeders' Cut spot implications. Um, I don't really know. At the very end, she does kind of get rolling just a, a little bit, but it's maybe too little too late. But if you like her, the extra uh, half a furlong distance should help her out. She's not going to catch probably the older, best older female horse of the year in Midnight Bisu, so the field is going to get a lot easier. So if you like her and there was ever a time for her to win, this probably has to be it right here. But as far as going forward past this race, I don't really like her. But... This field pretty much sets up where it's going to be she's a Julie or a late one of the two is probably going to take this race. If you're looking for maybe a prize play, Blue Prize did win the Florida Lees last year. And she didn't really fire first off the layoff coming back in 2018. Got seventh by eight and three quarters. She didn't do much in Latroy and got three by four, finished third by four lengths. So if you're looking for her to maybe be in better form this time around and you want to go for a price play, take the chance. Can't play everybody in the race, so I'm going to take a stand against playing her. But if she did somehow capture the form of last year and won the race, I wouldn't be surprised. But in my opinion, I think she's the Julie and the late kind of stand one, two over the field. And I don't think too much separates them. Uh... If she's a Julie, can take that one more step forward, I think she could win. Or if a late could uh, maybe run back more to the Azuri stakes or the personal ends in the last year, then I think she takes it. Uh, if I got to go on the record, I guess I'll have I'll make the pick with she's a Julie, just because I think she's in the better form. I'll probably do a two three straight exact would be how I play it because nothing else is gonna pay that good in the race. A six horse super effect is not going to pay very much. And even the trifecta with the two, three, and let's say blue prize comes up and gets third. It's not going to pay hardly anything. So probably just do a cold hard two, three exacta. Just how to play that. But thanks for watching guys.